or you can reverse that you can set it to the inside and pull the saturation out and we have a black and white flower now this is a good way to see your ring around go and adjust your shape your feather of your shape and that's not a problem you just go back to your geometry tab and while looking at your viewer you just go in and adjust your shape and it dynamic and that dynamically updates when you let go of the mouse cursor it it updates itself or you can click and drag over a cluster and drag them out like so now you can see over here this little purple right here I can drag this out you can see now it's gone same thing with these just going in and touching up a little bit Quite a few edges that need to be adjusted which you know I'm not going to take too many pains with it here on YouTube but um, I think you do you guys do get the gist of it anyways how to do it now it's looking pretty good maybe this corner down here yeah now we're looking pretty good so there we go we have this perfectly isolated um, key now we can go back to our secondaries and we can say we want to adjust the outside now switch outside and up the saturation we will make them leaves really really pop you know or you could change the leaves all together different color all together or you could even bring the shadow down and have it disappear go back to your inside turn your saturation back up now you have just your flower and you can go in and you can piddle with the color of your flower see and you can make it deep blue or a lighter blue or maybe a green it's really up to you what look you're going for let's see what can we do with it here Okay, now we have us a nice blue flower. You could even go into your secondaries tab, another tab of your secondaries, go to shape two, and click use your shape again and draw a little circle around another spot, say the inside here. Like that. And you could attach it and go back to your secondaries. And you could change that to a completely different color. Now you see I have this little circle right here. I could now I just shoot it towards yellow now it's yellow in the center you see now I've isolated this flower I could go back to my outside and bring it back in if I wanted to bring the background back in you can see now you can see some lines here or you can reset everything by hitting this little square and that resets everything so I hope you guys have gotten something from this. Um, as you can see, here's the original of that. Here it is now. So, I mean, you can totally do some really, really wonderful things within color. You really can. Give it a shot. That's how you use custom user shapes. You can even track these shapes along with moving objects in geometries tab. As you can see, there is a use tracker option. And if this was a moving flower or a shirt on a person or a hat on their head, I just uh, go in and use a tracker and set my tracker, which would be right here under the tracking tab. You say new, and it brings up this little tracker right here. Set it where you want. Go process, and it will start processing it. And sometimes it'll be, it's a pretty good tracker. If you have to go back, you can also manually do it, manually do it by hand. So that's how you would change the color of somebody's shirt that's in a movie and if it's not just a steel we're working with steels here so I just want to let you know that it is possible to work with moving footage um, so there you go let me show you the original of this one and again there it is and you can see how well color just it's a really wonderful application um, even you can use a little eyedropper if you want to like I can isolate this blue over here my crosshair you can see right there and I can maybe 
What happened? Oh, okay. I can maybe change the color of of their shirts. Let's go in here with the crosshair. Isolate some blue. And you can go in and you know inject different colors. Now you can see they're like a light blue. But basically, I just wanted to show you how to use user shapes. That's how you do it. Under the under the geometry tab, don't forget to attach your shape after you've made it. Um, this is your pan and scan. We can go over that later. This is, as you can see, where I move it around over here in the viewer. Is how that is, and you can keyframe this. See, you can set it right here, and you can set a keyframe, and then you move it down here and set another keyframe and it will pan your picture for you you can zoom it out like this zoom it way in pan it over really really nice especially for for still photography so i hope this guys has been something to set you in the right direction if you have any questions please please get a hold of me i'd be more than happy to answer them if i can um this is emeek 77 for finalcutstudioschool.com saying see you next week